A Palestinian billionaire who heads up one of the Middle East's biggest banks has been arrested in Saudi Arabia. Sameh al Mazri is the chairman of Arab Bank. He was on a business trip to Riyadh, but his family says that he's been detained for questioning. Saudi Arabia recently arrested several businessmen and princes in a so-called corruption crackdown. Let's speak now to uh, Rami Khouri, who is a professor, on, uh, professor and uh, senior fellow at the American University of Berry. He joins me now from Cambridge in Massachusetts. Uh, so Rami, uh, how do you perceive what's happening here? What's going on? It seems to be that the Saudi Arabian leadership is using uh, yet one more tactic to try to pressure a smaller, more vulnerable Arab country to fall in line with its wishes. That seems to be the analysis that most knowledgeable people about Jordan and, and Saudi Arabia and Palestine uh, are thinking now. And uh, this is basically another move by Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi crown prince who effectively runs the country, to bring Jordan and Palestine uh, in line with the Saudi wishes to have a close working relationship with Israel and the United States to push through a, a, a alleged peace plan that the um, son-in-law of President Trump, Jared Kushner, has been working on to try to achieve a Palestinian Israeli peace agreement, which everybody who has uh, looked into this and heard about what it contains, virtually everybody I've talked to uh, and read says that this is a, a totally unrealistic, one-sided Israeli deal that is being pushed by the Americans and now supported by the Saudis. And the Saudis are desperate to get uh, Jordanian and Palestinian support. They try to pressure Jordan and Palestine not to go to the uh, organization of Islamic Cooperation Summit in Turkey a few days ago uh, to take a united position on the Jerusalem issue. So on, on Both that basis, Jordan, Rami, are you, are you suggesting uh, that so uh, on that basis, Saudi Arabia uh, are, would be happy to let uh, the situation proceed with Jerusalem being the capital of Israel? Well, we don't know that. Uh, the Saudis have issued statements saying that they uh, think that the American move is unhelpful and is dangerous or whatever. Uh, they think there should be a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. That's their clear position. At the same time, they seem um, anxious to work with the Israelis, mainly because they feel that Israel, the U.S., and Saudi Arabia and others in the Arab world should be united in opposing Iran. Uh, in the region. Whether this is realistic or slightly hysterical is up to history to show us. Uh, but so I think, to be fair to the Saudis, they're not basically saying give Israel anything it wants, uh, but they're probably saying that close relations with Israel are probably more important right now than anything else for Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates and other Arab countries who are worried, genuinely worried uh, about Iran. Most of the world thinks this is exaggerated. Um, and so there's a kind of middle ground here where it's not very clear. But the, the thing about this is Sabih al-Masri uh, is, um, you know, he's like, I don't know, M M Michael Bloomberg for the economy of uh, New York. or so. He's just a massive figure in Jordan and Palestine. He's the chairman of the Arab Bank. The Arab Bank is the bank that the Jordanian government turns to. It's a commercial bank. And the Jordanian government, when it needs money, it turns to the Arab Bank to get some advances. Um, and so this is a, a massive a sign that Saudi Arabia is sending to Jordan that we're prepared uh, to rattle your whole economic structure and to the Palestinians as well, where Masri is a leading uh, investor. So it looks like this is following the attempt in Qatar, the attempt in Lebanon to uh, put stress on these smaller countries to have them fall in line. But the likelihood is that it, it won't succeed because the Jordanians have been through this before. Many times they've been under great pressure and they've always found a way to get out of it by reorganizing their relationships, giving in a little bit. Uh, for instance, on Qatar, when the Saudis pressured Jordan to follow Saudi and Emirati leads to boycott Qatar, the Jordanians didn't go all the way. They just withdrew their ambassador and they closed the Jazeera office, which are symbolic gestures to the Saudis, but nothing really substantive. And they'll probably find a way to get around this. The ultimate lesson here is that the consent of your people and your own sovereignty are the only true guarantors that any country has of its well-being and future 
uh, prosperity and security. And I think this is the message that we'll probably hear coming out of Jordan while the king of Jordan, Abdullah, tries to find the middle ground that okay. uh, allows the, you know, the economy not to collapse. Okay, Rami, I appreciate that. Thanks very much indeed. Rami Khoury speaking to us from Cambridge uh, in Massachusetts in the United States.